Hey everybody! I think since I'm going to be talking at you for the next couple of minutes, it's only fair that we get a little acquainted with each other. For starters, my name is Audrey Pagano, and I'm addicted to stress. Now it may sound weird when you first hear it because truly, who wants more stress in their life? But think about it, why else would people willingly jump out of airplanes or send themselves careening down treacherous whitewater rapids? There's something about being at the top of the food chain that causes our human brains to crave that extra sense of adrenaline we don't get the pleasure of experiencing by not being hunted on a daily basis. But no, that's not the type of stress I'm addicted to. My brand of choice is productivity. Doesn't sound too bad, and truly, I never had any qualms with it. That is, until my means of productivity were forcibly stripped from me. I'm gonna drop the keyword, folks. I'm talking about quarantine. As an extrovert who sourced all their self-worth and empowerment from the things I accomplished, whether it be academically, athletically, or socially, being forced into quarantine was pretty much the worst possible outcome for my mental health. Quite literally overnight, I lost all parameters of what success meant. There was nothing to be done, so how was I supposed to be productive? I wasn't in school and around teachers, so I didn't get that constant academic validation I'd grown so fond of, and all sports functions were canceled, so I wasn't able to practice or compete. All tangible evidence of my achievements were poof, gone. And that totally set me for a loop because I thought to myself, if all the things I worked so hard for can be erased so easily, how important can they really be? In the beginning, I tried to push that thought aside and just throw myself at whatever I could get my hands on. I taught myself guitar, I got a job, I painted, I ran ceaselessly. But as time went on and it became evident that we were going to be inside for just two weeks, I fell out of my denial and my rose-colored outlook began to slip. I spiraled farther than I'd ever thought possible. My anxiety soared, I experienced panic attacks almost on a daily basis. I couldn't sleep, didn't want to eat, even struggled to take care of myself in the most basic ways. It got to the point where my parents and I sought a diagnosis because clearly something was wrong, and boy, did I get one. I was officially diagnosed with panic disorder and high-functioning depression, which to me was basically just a compliment. I was so far gone, I was like, ooh, well, at least I'm high-functioning. Upon sharing my experiences with friends my age, I came to realize that my situation was not unique in the slightest. Further research showed me that nationally, over the course of the pandemic, the amount of adolescents experiencing symptoms of anxiety and or depression disorders uh, rocketed from one in eight to one in four just over the course of the first year. In adults, the effects of the quarantine were so prevalent that a new term for anxiety was adopted. They called it hurry sickness. Understandably, over the pandemic, people became so riddled with stress and anxiety that the effects of a purely mental disorder began to present itself physically in the populace. While the rate of depression and anxiety diagnoses encroached all across the board, it became apparent that the numbers in the U.S. were much higher than those of other countries. The U.S., Ukraine, and Australia all came in at 5.9% of their population experiencing these symptoms, despite the global average of only 4.4%. We think about this in terms of the U.S. specifically. What could possibly be the collective cause for reaction to this pandemic? Why did we, as a country, take this one so hard? Well, if you think about it, it makes sense because the U.S. has always been an outlier. We were the first to win our independence from Great Britain, the first to adopt a democratic republic as our primary form of government, and one of the first to embrace capitalism as our main economic system. Europe, for example, is another region that is a large proponent of that economic system, but they tend to do things a little differently than us. While Europe mandates an average of 20 hours paid vacation leave per year, the U.S. mandates a whopping sum of zero hours a year. Not to say we don't get paid vacation leave, but there's no mandate in the U.S. that requires it. On top of this, the U.S. works an average of 34 hours a week versus the European Union's only 25. And as a result, the European Union has a collective life expectancy of 84 years versus the U.S.'s only 79. And finally, more than three-fourths of U.S. adults report incapacitating stress-related illness compared to Europe's only two-thirds. So where am I going with this? I bring up these statistics to draw parallels between the work-life balance of the U.S. versus the EU. Despite our similarities in societal structure and economic system, the EU has mastered this balance far better than us Americans. If you think about it, it makes sense, because ever since we were kids, the ideal of the American dream has been ingrained into us, and we pride ourselves on being one of the hardest working nations in the world. But must we take it to the extent that our national life expectancy is diminishing? Globally, we have experienced a new generational trauma in the pandemic. Our great-grandparents had the Great Depression. We had a Great Depression. Clearly, the pandemic affected us all, but we must take into account the prolonged effects it may have on our mental health. 
So the big question is, how do we stop? How do we stop prioritizing our productivity as our means of happiness and sustainment? The answer is much easier said than done, as most meaningful things are. We must find a way to find empowerment in our authenticity. At the end of the day, if you were to lose everything, would you be content in simply being? The fact of the matter is, we're losing everything as we speak. The only thing certain in this life is death and taxes, as they say, and I think the reason we all feel this sense of urgency and need to feel productive is because we're all subconsciously aware of the fragility of our existence. Rather than seeing this inevitability as a threat, why not see it as a motivation? A gentle reminder that our accomplishments do not define us, because in the end we can't take them with us. What we can take with us, however, are the memories we make along the way. The memory of the smiles of our loved ones, the smell of our favorite meal, the feeling of a warm embrace, not how many sales you got this quarter, what your GPA was your junior year. We must come to terms with the fact that our sense of identity does not belong in the things we accomplish. You enter this world already fully worthy of life. The fact that you exist at all is living proof of that. It doesn't matter what you do to make your life more worthwhile because you are priceless as you are. Your productivity does not define you because your authentic self is beautiful. Thank you.